okay this is the final okay so this is the top of all that what is called as a non uniform rational b splines i mean this is the topmost or a superset of every guy all the b circles that we saw or b splines cause it is a subset of what is called as a non uniform rational b splines have you anybody heard of non uniform rational b splines kind of absolutely silent now so b spline is the farthest we have probably heard of and even that is like a rare okay so the, i'll just briefly tell the idea of non uniform rational b spline so you know that rational b spline means you can add weight to each of the control points okay so if i have a b not then there is a h not i can add some weight so for example if i have a control point b not and then put a h1 that means using this weight i can pull the curve close to the control point b1 okay that is the idea of a rational b spline this is one way and then the non uniform also does something very similar they remember the parametrization 0 1 2 3 right i had three curves i am collapsing one of them to become a curve of zero length that means it will pass through that particular point so i am combining the idea of repeating and the weights okay so repeating not value which is called as non uniform not value and then i am putting a weight on to the control point then it becomes a rational so putting together it becomes what is called as a non uniform rational b spline this is the top of it top echelon if you want to find if you can understand non uniform rational b splines i think you are done pretty much you can understand everything this basically combines the idea of rational b spline and the non uniform not vector so what that does is that you know you can actually generate rational curves like your uh, uh, you know circles and other uh, even your second degree other second degree curves also using b spline and it will be an exact circle okay it will conform to your uh, exact uh, parametric equation of your uh, circle on that so this is again not possible using your i mean of course in this case it becomes a rational bezier curve also i mean which is maybe a little bit too much for you guys to see that uh, that is actually because of each one is a piece and remember uh, you have three you have a triangle control point that means what is the degree of the each of the pieces What is the degree of each of the pieces? Because you have three control points. Two. Ah, uh, two. So this two is also now. Remember, it's n plus one. Then then k is what? K is two. K equals n plus one in this case. Okay. So it actually becomes a rational Bezier curve. And then piece it together to form what is called as a non-uniform rational Bezier curve. And in this case, it becomes a circle on that. Okay. Let me just start to move a little bit on that. Okay, for me, I have written that. So you can see that this is n plus one. You have three control points, and then that means I am also putting an order <coughs> in terms of k equals two. Sorry, it should be k equals three. So that means degree is two. So k and n plus one becomes equal because n plus one is one, two, and three. So k equals n plus one. That actually reduces your B spline to a Bezier curve. But it's instead of a normal Bezier curve, this becomes a rational Bezier curve on that, which is a Special case of rational B spline, which is of course a special case of non-uniform rational B spline. Anyway, I think this <clears throat> a little bit too much now. I guess okay. I think we'll probably stop with that. Okay, I mean, so in the so now any questions, guys? I mean, hope all of you are still in shape. <laughs> Are I not out of shape? <laughs> Uh, can Sir, so we here? can uh, approximate other curves like sinusoidal curves and all using this. In uh, may not be everything may not be very easy to approximate. I mean, uh, we have a well-known uh, theory for approximating the second degree curves like your circles, ellipses, via the B spline uh, mode. But I I not sure whether everything can be generated. Maybe, but I'm I'm not I'm not very sure of the answer. Okay, so sines and exponentials we cannot uh, we we don't have yeah, an idea. We, of we may have to come up with see. Hello. So right. Yeah, I think uh, it's an issue with internet. the weight for this control point for example in this case the weight of this uh, b b2 is half 
and similarly weight of b4 is half and so on so if you reduce something like that then uh, by using the here we have used a simple idea of angles uh, a triangle inequality also no not even triangle just basically by adjusting the triangles angles uh, within the system we could find uh, what should be this so half is what in terms of angle where do you get this half is it like 60 degree sine of, of is it like sine of degree sine or cos Uh, sorry, sign, uh, sign 30 is uh, half, so cos, uh, cos 60, uh, sorry, cos 60. So this comes from cos theta, cos angle. Uh, this is like, you know, this is like a thing on that, uh, which is, uh, you know, this, this is an angle subtended on that, and it, uh, you can see that that angle is actually kind of 60 degrees on that. So that is where it became, uh, where there is a theory saying that this weight has to, should be cos theta or uh, <clears throat> something like that. Okay, or half of that, I think, half of the subtended angle. Uh, so that is, if we can formulate theory for other curves, I think you should be able to replicate them as closely as possible. I mean, that would be my overall answer to this. Uh, okay, any other okay, question? Sir. Yeah. Lot of guys have gone into silent mode, I think. So uh, I have a question. Sure, uh, sure. Since these uh, lines are still, I mean, uh, they form a finite dimensional vector space. So, I mean, no matter what kind of spline you take, uh, there will be basically several curves that it will not be able to represent. Right? Correct, correct. Uh, but uh, that is what, uh, so, but I don't know the exact answer. But yes, so my overall answer would be, as long as you can try to replicate in like uh, this derivation in terms of finding the weights somehow, right, then right. you can replicate. Yeah, so that okay. is my overall answer. Yes, most many curves we may not be able to re reproduce. See, this whole idea of this uh, B spline is, in my opinion, is not to reproduce an exact, uh, right, right. exact curves. Okay, this is for mm -hmm. an intuitive design like car bodies. These are more aesthetic, right? You have seen all these cars. You know, all these uh, new cars, uh, particularly from multinational like the RD right. or BMW, you can see the shape of their, uh, you know, uh, cars, right? So that kind of design won't come if you force it to behave like right. a sign curve or a cars or something like that. Sure. And <clears throat> so overall, question... yeah, correct. Overall, to the answer to the question, yes, it may not be possible to replicate every curve. And the uh, second question is, uh, so as of now, I think you've seen uh, the lines which are all open curves, right? Uh, what happens if, uh, what changes if we want to turn it into a closed curve? Okay, see, this is a closed curve. What you see, circle is a closed curve. Okay, but okay, you so can see just... that, yeah, but you can see that there is a repeating of a control point here. Oh, okay, I'll right. go back. And... <clears throat> So we have to uh, we have to ensure a repeatability, and so the uh, uh, the curve passes through that particular control point with a certain degree of continuity on that. So, for example, if you if you naturally take a, a control point like this, right, which is uh, having right. something like this, let's say it's a closed one. You can also have closed. It's not that everything has to be open, but the shape of this could be could be like this. Or if you take a bezier, it will be like this, like a balloon right. shape. But if right. you want to have a continuity, like if you want to have right. a over which is having tangent continuity, then you have right. to appropriately set that condition. So that is the only right. problem. So if the curve okay. can still be closed, but depending on what kind of tangential conditions that you want, you have to align these control points exactly. So if you have a control point like this, you'll get a curve like this. If you have a control point which is collinear and also, then there is a possibility it is going to be tangential like this. Right. So, so if you want to if you want to maintain the same uh, differentiability at the end point also, then maybe we'll have to repeat more uh, control points. Correct. You are forcing that to become more tangential. So one way is to make it as a collinear set of control points. The first and last guy comes and ch changes here, and it's the tangent is also along that. So that means you attain your tangential continuity at that point. Oh, Even in these planes also, it is possible. There are periodic uniform not vectors, you know. Uh, we can right. actually separate pretty much a lot of things. I mean, like, uh, it's very fascinating. 
but uh, you know somewhat more complicated than our usual sure. equations that is the only problem right. okay. sir uh, other guys another uh, quick question i think i'm hogging uh, the question answer session but still uh, that's uh, okay. okay i don't have any problem okay other guys because the only see the only problem that i have currently is it's either vignesh or what's hari or you know another gaurav and it's, i i'm not like hearing from other guys and that is the major problem for me now okay other than that i can answer questions yeah go ahead vignesh uh so can we look at the uh, b spline and the bezier curves in general as say a weighted average of the convex hull areas yeah yeah definitely yes that is why the convex hull plays a great role it's a weighted average only because you have alpha not b not plus alpha 1 b1 plus alpha 2 b2 it's in some sense it's a weighted form okay it's all it's a way so we call that as a convex combination okay i mean these are all uh there are some people use the word barycentric coordinates you know all that people use and depending on that uh, conditions on alpha uh, it can become a affine combination and so on so yes it's all finally weighted uh, set of control points is what we are using and and that weights can change uh, in a depending on in a different manner and remember those uh, weights we are coming from uh, one is coming from uh, the basis functions and you can also add a weight in terms of rational okay so that is so it is not a simple like a weighted thing so there are lot of you know nitty gritties involved in this okay one in form of basis function another in the form of rational and non uniform and so on it's like a super set of what you are probably talking about. but by and large yes you can say it is a weighted uh, combination yeah uh, professor ramnathan uh, can you hear me i am ventish here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i had a general question so uh, since nerves are the most general kind of curves that you can have so uh, so now in pro, in the, in this uh, what the commercial software that you have okay so do they use only nerves uh, because they are the most general one yeah. no may not uh, though i have not seen much if in in samadhi as you can see these nerves is uh very difficult to understand even for us who are doing research on that it's not may not be so in many cases what uh, i have seen and uh, like for example the automotive design they yeah. actually may use only a bezier patches they have this what is called as class a surfaces class b and so mm -hmm. on uh, so which i think are all bezier patches so if you go to surfaces we will see little bit on surfaces i think many mm -hmm. of the automotive things uh, see bezier as you can now clearly see Uh, it's uh, you know much more uh, breathing space in understanding and then yeah, 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 yeah. so uh, so it's so now nerves is the standard it's a kind of a de facto standard but in um, practice all uh, like for example aerospace every design uses b spline but in many hmm. cases uh, my belief is that which i have seen as class a class b surface they reduced to a bezier patch so I because i think that uh, for a easier you know, to handle a, and understand <laughs> yeah <laughs> for an understanding of other guys uh they are able to understand better but i don't think uh, they do anything less than bezier i mean not yes. your uh, cubic spline or something like that okay in okay. these applications but yes. nerves is yes, a de facto standard in uh, these uh, big uh, automotive aerospace but i really doubt whether nerves is being put into use as we have seen in this uh, theory class on that uh, i doubt it on that but but actually i am kind of 50 50 but i have seen uh, terms like class a class b surfaces which are all i think uh, bezier surface patches not b spline surface patches and uh, what are the references good references uh, okay, uh, i saw some okay. of them. yeah i yeah, i'll go back to that uh, page so if you go back to my first page these are excellent books actually i'll uh, so these are the uh, okay i think it's a difference so these are the three books uh, of course uh, the last one deals with more of differential geometry but yeah. Uh, yeah. these two books are pretty really good but farin farin, uh, farin yeah. only on nerve yeah. farin is only nerve. on nerves no okay. yeah farin is on uh, book on nerve that's the nerve the nerves book okay i haven't put it <coughs> that is okay i will yeah. write it now so that is called as a nerves book it by itself uh, you can use that uh, that is a pigel and tiller they are the authors of that book oh. i mean they are the kind of what is that uh, innovators of this technique i guess So they have a book called Nerves book. I think uh, uh, these two books are more generic. It talks about uh, you know uh, 
uh, why this plan B0 is important uh, in, in connection with other curves like the cubic B spline and other parametric curves, including the second degree curves and surfaces and so on. Uh, whereas I think Nerf's book is completely on uh, B splines. So it may not be a good book to start with. I mean, once you go to a little advanced level, maybe. And there is another book also called as, uh, uh, by Farin, Gerald Farin, excellent book. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I think CAD. CAD. Yeah, book title is CAGD, actually. Yeah, CAGD. Yeah, yeah, yeah CAGD. computed at geometric design uh, and uh, written by Gerald Farin. It's also a pretty good book on that. <clears throat> But uh, this is uh, this is like uh, you know uh, these two books are Farin and the Pegel and Tiller. I would say a little bit advanced uh, than uh, these two books. So if you are starting reading on this topic, you start with these two books, and then you go to differential geometry to understand the properties, and then uh, you can go to this venture into these two books after. That's my opinion personally. I would say. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank Sir, you. And in general, for differential geometry, is this a good primer or like are there other books which can like say, I have heard of an author named Argashev or something. Mm, I don't know, but that's see this, uh, this Dokarma book is one of the better ones for engineers. If you go to any other differential geometry book, I don't think you will cross the first few uh, pages of the book. I mean, that is highly mathematical. So somebody maybe who are very mathematically inclined, it will start with charts, at last, and all. Uh, at least I was not able to, <clears throat> you know, what I said, appreciate. I mean, it's all great book in terms of mathematics. Maybe Aditya might not like my statement. So, <clears throat> uh, no, no, I agree. <laughs> so uh, it was hard for me to, you know, uh, to understand all those concepts. I would say this Dokarmo. Uh, even though I don't think Indian edition is available, in my opinion, it's a pretty good book on that. Uh, but more for engineers, uh, I would say this is better. If you know differential calculus and uh, all these things, then I think it should be this book is more readable for us than other differential geometry books, including uh, probably Kresik and so on. Yes. Sir. I think there is a is book that... which is possibly even more elementary than Dokamo. It's uh... Called, I think, yeah. Elementary Differential Geometry by Andrew Pressy. Oh, okay. 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 Of course, I think it has its own limitations. Uh, correct. correct. Not... That's okay. I'll see. First thing, we should first understand what is written, right? Then we then we can right. deeper. Exactly. Right? If we can't do that, then uh, we are done. But I see even in Martinson, actually, he has dealt with the differential properties in a very good way. There are short chapters okay. available in Martinson. Uh, on differential properties of curves and surfaces uh, as separate chapters. Actually, that is pretty good. I mean, I would say it is more than sufficient to have a good feel of those differential properties. What is the book name? Martins? No, no, same. Geometric Modeling by Martinson. Second book in this uh, list. Okay, okay. Martinson. Martinson. Okay. Martinson has those details. At least newer yeah. version has that. Yeah. Older version may not have. I think yeah, first version edition. don't have. Second has that, I think. Yeah. Third, I think now it's the third edition. Yeah, that's right. Now it's at the third, yeah. So I still feel second is better. Anyway, I think <laughs> I read both, but I thought that they tried to reduce a lot of content in the third and in my opinion, they reduced too much. I think. Even the Lagrange interpolation, all those feelings are not there in third edition. I see. Okay, so guys, I think who want to do, you know, assignment or lab. So we are coming back in the afternoon, but we may not have what is called supposedly a lab in that sense. So I would give you some exercises for you to get some understanding of these concepts. Okay, so let me just go and quickly tell you what sort of exercises that you can try. So you can see that all are, if you want to implement, these are a little, little bit programmatically involved. Okay, I don't think you will be able to finish that in, uh, in half an hour or something like that. May not be a feasible one. So I have formulated certain exercises like you can try to understand these uh, parametric curves. I think this I already have a Python file. If uh, many of you are familiar with Python, you can just take that uh, file and run it. Uh, and you can uh, do these uh, equations. Okay, one thing I forgot to show. Okay, I'll... Guys, I think can it take just uh, two or three minutes? I have to switch to the other system. Are you all there? Yes. 
Yes. Okay, you can see these kinds of yes, exercises. Yes, uh, find out these uh, where the Bernstein basis is maximum, which we did little bit discussed, and how to show the de Castle algorithm actually results in a Bezier curve. You can try. Basically, if you just expand that uh, linear equations or linear interpolation and put together all that, you will get back that uh, binomial expression based on equation. But then a direct question. And then uh, also I would say that you use GU read. So let me just share my other system on that. I'm going to stop share this one. So this GU read, uh, I don't know whether you have heard of the name Gershon Elber uh, from, uh, from Technion <clears throat> in Israel. He is an out and out uh, curves and surfaces guy. He doesn't do anything on discrete side. Okay. So completely continuous uh, curves and surfaces, all his work. And these are all his own uh, product. I think Utah, somebody was mentioning, right? Uh, somebody was from Utah. I think we heard that in one of the introductory. Uh, he is also from Utah. Yes, okay. yeah. Yeah. Utah connection. So his guide, Elaine Cohen. And if you remember uh, Rosenfeld, who talked about uh, the uh, you know uh, octree, uh, all the subdivision based methods long back in 80s. Uh, they are all from Uyota only. If you look at all those representations, like the discrete representation, Octree, and the previous ones, they are uh, from this Utah group. And that. But this guy is completely on curves and surface. So I'll just a little bit on B-spline here. I'm clicking on B-spline. So I'm going to uh, have some control points. Okay, you can see that I'm generating some control points. You can see a B-spline curve happen. That is because, okay. So you can control the order here. You can see there is an order at the right. So remember it is at order four now, this many control points. I'm going to change the order. So all of you watch it carefully how the curve changes. So from four, I'm going to three. Okay, you can see the curve behavior is changing. What is that at k equal to two? What is that you're going to expect? So at k equal to two, what will happen? It will follow that uh, line. Control polygon itself. Okay, use the term control polygon. So I'm going to go to two, and you can see that control polygon and the curve got merged all. Okay, so you can increase the curve degree or uh, the order in this case. Now you can see that I'm going to change one of the control points. Like I'm here. Ah, this is one difficulty I have. Okay, so delete this guy. So I'm trying to move one of the control points here. Okay, see I'm moving here, and you can see it is only affecting one portion of the curve. Are you guys able to see that? Yes. And you can see on the right hand side screen, the curve points also, the control points. And you can see that this portion of the curve remains untouched. Okay, which doesn't happen in uh, in Bezier. So when I move this guy, you can clearly see that one uh, segment of the curve is completely unaffected. So this is the local behavior of the curve, which is very difficult. See, even here, you can see some portion of the curve gets unchanged. Okay, which is almost very difficult, uh, not almost, it's not possible in BZ. Okay, now if you see here, you can still see some portion of the uh, end on this side, it is unaffected. So this is the beauty of this uh, B-spline curve. Okay, I think uh, I'm able to demonstrate it better on that. So any other question, guys? If I think all are exhausted, maybe. Are you guys still there? Okay, so, so hopefully you observed that when I move the control points, you can see one segment is kind of untouched. The curve portion did not undergo change. So this is one of the great effects of the uh, B spline function. And of course, the order also can be changed. I didn't show the other cases of changing the not vector. I think I will leave it at that point now. So if you have any questions, so try to do these uh, simple problems that I have given on the other exercise. It, is, it won't take much time. You can run my Python code. But if you want to do advanced one, you have to really do the coding of the Bezier curve, either in a Bernstein basis form or in a uh, de Castle form, on that, which both of them will take a little bit time. But if you are pretty good in programming, I think uh, the de Castle one, you can finish it much faster. I mean, that's my hands on. Okay. So if no further questions, I see all of them. Okay, I'll, let's see whether all guys are there. Can you put an yes from all guys? So at least let me see the other names here. Okay, Ritvik, Gaurav, Sanchin. Okay. 
I mean, everyone is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they have to. I mean, this, <clears throat> there cannot be anything. Uh, no second opinion on that, though. <laughs> but uh, still, a lot of guys have already gone for lunch. Looks like. <laughs> anyway, <let's go. laughs> that is the reason for marking yes <laughs> or ask to be marked yes. You can see that almost right. ten plus are opting on that. <clears throat> okay, so I think uh, try these assignments in the afternoon. I will give you some glimpse of. Surfaces which are going to be little easier, having seen this busier and busier in detail. Okay, the surface form is adding one more summation to that, and I'll give some idea about surfaces in the afternoon. Okay, hope you had a better time. Uh, slides, I will put it. I'll just uh, uh, can I share it uh, after in the afternoon after I finish this. Okay, I'll put all these slides. There. Sure. If more than the slides, I think you should watch the video. Because uh, normally I don't put everything in the slide. Yes, that will be in 3D. Yes, I mean you can also consider curves also in 3D. So space curve, if you consider the space curve, they are also 3D. We will see what are called surfaces in the afternoon, which of course have to be at least in 3D. 